Hi there, this is Janet Gershon Siegel, and I'm the Lonely Writer. This is serious social media help for the independent author. The independent author is defined as a writer who does not yet have an agent. All this month I've been doing daily prompts for NaNoWriMo. And uh, these prompts are in all sorts of orders, so please feel free to double back, skip a few, look at them later, change them around, uh, go crazy with them, you know, and have some fun with it. So uh, today's prompt is one word. It's the word sour. Now, what do we mean when somebody, when something rather is sour? Uh, I mean, it's it's kind of obvious. I think we, we all know what the, this sort of puckering kind of taste and feeling really is. Uh, citrus is a really classic kind of sour flavor. Uh, and, you know, there's actually people who can't quite tell the difference between lemon and lime, I might add. Uh, so it's lemon, it's lime, it's, it's grapefruit, it's stuff like that. So there's a, a sharpness to it. There's a tang. Uh, but it could also be things that are underripe. If you've ever had uh, uh, um, blueberries in particular that are a little underripe, they tend to be sour. Uh, so, but there's also a question of whether sourness is a relative term. Now, one of the things that happens with us when we, you know, when we're eating is we tend to get used to a flavor. And so, uh, it doesn't have as much of a power to, uh, uh, to, to kind of, not, not that it doesn't excite us, but it's that it, we get, we get used to the taste. And uh, whereas that first bite of something is, you know, it's sour, or it's crunchy, or it's, or it's hot, or whatever. Uh, when we're getting it later, when we're taking it later uh, in the in the same meal, then it, it's it's a little diminished. So is sourness kind of a relative term? Are we talking about something that's pure lemon, or are we talking about something that, uh, you know, it's a very 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 sweet sweet and iced tea and there's just the tiniest bit of lemon in it or, or or a bitter beer maybe that that has just a little bit of lime juice in it now uh and of course we also uh we have a tendency to compare this to other things in particular we tend to, we tend to compare sourness to sweet things and of course uh, sour and sweet go rather well together uh, but let's try to flip this script a bit and look at it a little bit differently. So what do we mean when we say a person is sour? Now, it's sort of that 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 uh, that term, quote unquote, the sourpuss. Uh, and and a, one of the bigger connotations is unpleasantness. Uh, if you remember from the Austin Powers movie, um, Frau Farbissna, her name in German actually means sourpuss. So, so it's sort of this kind of an idea of somebody who's never really satisfied with things, who is, um, who is just not very nice, uh, kind of strict, uh, and maybe even downright mean. You know, maybe they're a little beyond, uh, a little sour and they're just, and they're just plain mean people. This isn't bitterness. Bitterness in, in, when we're talking about people seems to have a connotation of a regret or a vengeance kind of thing. Sweetness, of course, is somebody who's, you know, who's very caring. And salt, it can be somebody who's sort of down to earth or, or, or maybe doesn't have a filter. But somebody who's sour seems to be, uh, that, that, that seems to have, first off, it's, it, it's virtually always a negative connotation, but it's also a connotation of somebody who's, who's just, who's just plain, just plain nasty. Uh, but it can, but there's also a bit of a connotation. There's sort of this, this hint that they might be overly fussy. And, and maybe some of this is that they just don't really know what they want in life. So they reject this, that, and the other thing, you know, this is no good, this is no good, this is no good. Uh, but it's not because, uh, something necessarily is poor quality. It's that they're just not really sure what they want. So finally, once again, this is Janet Gershon Siegel, and I'm the Lonely Writer, because independent writer never has to be alone. Thank you so much for listening, and good luck with NaNoWriMo.